What it do, famos? It's your boy J Rock. And Roman the Ox. On Rise and Grind this afternoon. Yeah. Today, we're going to be talking about tattoo culture. More specifically, we're going to be talking about tattoo shops and what you got to deal with all the time. So, their attitude, the drug environment, and hazing. Those are like the three main things we're going to talk about. But I want you to talk about like your experience working in the shops and like attitudes towards other artists first off well i mean most of the time <clears throat> it's attitude that people give you is just if you know who's more busy they don't like to snake clients i mean i've worked in a few shops that people have they tell your customers that you're not there if you're <laughs> not there right off rip they won't say that you went to the store or That's you'll so be right weird. back they'll just be like oh he's not in today people really that do sabotage. that yeah you have guys that That's sabotage so weird. Kinds of stuff. <laughs> when you talk to <sighs> tattoo artists like 90 percent of them are kind of like rude right? well, most of the time like, i mean you give I, them your I, card, I've, been out, like, I've been out networking and giving my cards out to people and they've been like, been like oh no i'm a tattoo artist no thanks but it's like i have artwork that i need done and I'm looking well, for, a, look for a somebody. qualified tattoo artist. You think yeah. they're like the best, pretty much? Yeah, everybody's got rock star syndrome. Like, there's this, like, this is a big crazy. city for people to be worried about competition. First and there's off, already people talking about your shop, and we just kind of like stay to our own. We're yeah, new, I don't, I don't, so that's I don't really know weird. the name of <laughs> almost any tattoo artist. I follow a couple good people. I'm, they do amazing work. It's artists that I watch and yeah. comment and share love and, and sometimes share it and be like, this is awesome picture. Check this out that somebody so and so just did. And everything else so I mean like I probably won't get that back but I still do it I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lower myself that's why we're doing this podcast because we want to bring out and show like the behind the scenes of the tattoo culture because it is like grimy like some of it and I was just shocked and amazed to hear like your experiences there and then just to see like secondhand like oh my god like people actually do that like and we'll talk about more about that, like, in the hazing, like, later on in this video. Some of that stuff, like, he was telling people I worked with last night, and they're like, that's insane. But it's not just, like, where he's been. It's, like, everywhere. And just how the tattoo artists, like, talk, they interact with each other. It's not a very healthy working environment, for no, sure. it's like, old school. <laughs> they definitely try to treat it old school. The tattoo industry, for the most part, I can't speak for everybody. Yeah. But a lot of the times... It's artists that are stuck in their ways. They're 40, 50-year-old guys who own a shop. Or most of the time, the guy that owns the shop doesn't even do any of the tattoos. That's the mm -hmm. biggest problem. Yeah, there are I way too that. many tattoo studios owned by non-tattooists that are out here calling shots just because they got a business degree or something and they see that tattoos bring in a lot of money that they're going to own a shop and try to run it the way they do. But I've had silent owners that have never been so silent. And yeah, it's like nothing. <clears throat> that always happens. Yeah. They always want to call the shots on how this is and do free tattoos for these people and not compensate yeah. the artists that are doing the free tattoos. Isn't that crazy? Like, I would have never thought that. I mean, that. you can't ask me to do a tattoo for somebody for $200 and then not pay me my half my 50 percent as an artist my 60 percent as an artist yeah because you split with the shop too people's. that a lot of people don't know you split with the shop and i the, some shops are different you said like with using their equipment and their ink but yeah it's normally what like 50 50 yeah split? Uh, a basic split's a 50 50 spot or yeah, everybody's right. got different requirements yeah I'm not going to say what people are required to bring and what people aren't because everybody is different. Good tattoo shop. artist says it's $400 for a tattoo. That's because most likely we got to pay our shop or our overhead. So we only see $200 of that. The other problem is the tattoo artist interaction with the clients. You've told me some pretty crazy stories. One, most of them are very, rude, very yeah. rude. You know, when, when, when you walk in. And, and if you're a girl, they're, like, really gross. That's the main reason why I did not go because I was, like, this dude's going to, like, try to hit on me or just be gross. The owner yeah, wanted had, you to situation. tattoo somebody he was, like, trying to sleep with and weird shit. Just, like, tattoo artists, like, hitting on girls and being unprofessional and think it's, like, so cool to tattoo a girl and tattoo her on the butt. And if you're a professional, you should act professionally. Like, I have a degree in sports medicine and I don't, I'm not like, oh my god, yay, a groin injury. <laughs> no, like, 
I look at it differently and that's how you should be too because you're doing a procedure on somebody and it doesn't matter where it's at, you should act professionally. Yeah, what would no, you think? Not, that's what I see. Not a lot of the times. I mean, it just artists do. Artists are artists. Guys are guys. Most tattoo artists are guys. That's just how it is. Guys and girls aren't all, oh, I'm so excited to to do a groin tattoo or any of that. I mean, that's just not really in this industry. That's, that's my point is that most tattoo artists in the world are guys. And most of them try to use that to their benefit. It's it's not the way tattoo artists should be going. I, I mean, you're you're trying to utilize what you got to get a sexual tendency out of something, which is just not cool. It totally makes all of us look bad. Yeah. I mean, I've had too many artists that had done that with clients that we've had to let go, boss owners, all that stuff. And, and I mean, it's just not cool. I'm trying to hire a woman artist so that way my female clients can feel a lot more comfortable by having the choice of having myself or her tattoo them. Females, like with any job, like they, they're they very dramatic and try to start drama and we're not about that. Not, Again, we're trying yet. to like change the environment with tattoo culture and how people perceive it. And if you have like guys being gross trying to hit on girls and think it's so cool to tattoo a booby or ass or whatever. And then you have girls that are like, well, I slept with so-and-so or I partied with so-and-so and did this. It's the same thing. And it's like, you're no better than the guys. So it's like boys and girls need to like get their shit together. Like it's dangerous too like and that's what we'll talk about next is the drugs in tattoo shops and how like even here getting permits and talking to people we've heard that a lot of shops have shut down because of selling drugs and selling drugs doing yeah, drugs, and doing drug drugs raids, like in the back just, like I mean, yeah and then you have an artist unreal. that's doing a design on you and they're doing drugs and we're not talking about like weed or anything we're talking about like what have you seen like drugs, heroin, heroin crack, cocaine, cocaine crack oh my god i mean yeah you, man pills is a big thing pharmaceuticals heroin are the probably the two biggest things and cocaine and can you imagine like getting huge. tattooed by somebody on heroin they're like falling where asleep where i grew up there's a kid named heroin d and you give oh him a 20 god. piece and he would tattoo you in his kitchen and he would bump that stuff before he did it. I don't know what people are thinking. You get what you pay for. Yeah, that's like insane. And if you if you buy a twenty dollar tattoo in twenty dollars in heroin, I mean, you're really gonna get what you pay for. Yeah, you're gonna and get it's a just heroin twenty dollar yeah. tattoo. And it's just sad because like I mean that's with musicians too. Like they're just drugs and alcohol and everything. And alcohol is a drug too. Like it's not natural to your bodies. But like even like your mentor and stuff like had an overdose. Yeah, it's just really sad. A heroin overdose. Yeah. Yeah. So the last big problem in tattoo industry is hazing and hazing as a tattoo artist, hazing with apprenticeships. Ninety percent of the time, going through an apprenticeship, at least when I grew up, might be a lot different now because I haven't been through an apprenticeship in years. But they would just have us clean toilets with toothbrushes, scrub this. They purposely would give us not the right cleaning utensils to have to go clean and do a chore. It's like frat hazing. It's like frat hazing, pretty <laughs> much, you know? Wow. A bunch of older guys who who funny. make you stick around enough and do a bunch of stuff that most of it's beneficial, learning how to set up, how to do tattoo stuff and machines and learning about this and answering questions, yes, but like having to sit there and wipe down a booth with only a rag and, and mat aside, that's like absurd. Making somebody clean stuff with toothbrushes, absurd. Forcing your apprentices to go on food runs, not giving them enough money to buy food and expecting them to buy like buy all your food and you know if they don't show up they're mad that you showed up without and all you pay for these apprenticeships and right you, too yeah Normally. most of the time i yeah. mean like you right, don't so make money during them there's two ways of apprenticeships either you know an artist or you meet an artist they agree on an apprenticeship to take you on for a certain amount of time and while you're under that apprenticeship you're under their leeway of when you're allowed to tattoo the public and then once they say and find it fit for you to tattoo the public, you start tattooing for dirt cheap next to free. Then you get your hours under your belt, how many hours you've logged, what you start learning and practicing. And then you start getting paid small increments. You don't get your 50% until usually a year or two. 
So you spend a lot of time doing free work, not having another job. They expect you to be there hours and hours yeah. throughout the day, setting up for them, tearing down for them, cleaning up after them, handling all their busy work, settling their appointments, and all this, other, stuff and all this other crazy <laughs> stuff. That that like those are not those are the work, work, just those like are the crazy. requirements of an apprenticeship. And then, if it's a, some of them, they charge money. Like I charge money for apprenticeships because I don't want anybody that's after a free ride. If you're not willing to pay for an apprenticeship, month by month or quarterly, to make sure that you're getting the proper education and everything else, and I know that you're gonna show up and handle it seriously because your money is on the line. Then you know that that's how I do apprenticeships. But you don't like do the hazing. I don't. Like, was there anything anybody. else that like people did hazing wise that was people, you were like oh, man, what people, the f? <laughs> people would like constantly. Um, I had this one guy, at one of my my second shops that I worked at. Um, his name is Mark, and he would like to try to water down inks and stuff put witch hazel in them or water see, so that that's way like, see that's scary as a client again so that way they're 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 you know your tattoos are looking bad you can do Oof. find a ways to get you fired so that way they could try to take the walk-in customer clientele or something of that nature i mean i've had guys untune my coil machines i've had guys purposely like drop my machines on the ground trip over my clip cords on purpose when they know where the oh clip God. cords are is that as an apprentice Pull. or just like as an artist no when they did that. That was too. as an artist. As an artist, yeah. yeah. As an artist because After you put at in that all point, your work. At yeah. that point, I was taking a, a high volume of walk-in clientele. You so know, like and a lot of people were them. asking asking for me to tattoo them um, as walk-in clientele. So while I had a line of people building at the door with two artists sitting here not being able to produce, to produce tattoos... They're sitting there watching me do five or six tattoos in a day while they're not making any money. And then it's not the fact that, I, that I'm that i taking the walk-ins. It's just when they request me as their artist, then that's what they request. And you got to give your customer what yeah, they request. Yeah, better, yeah, for so, them. But they're making your image look bad. And, I mean, that's not cool. As an artist, why would you jeopardize another artist? Why would you jeopardize a client like that? First off, if you do something to create, you know, bad work on that person and you're going to try to swoop in and be like, oh, I'll do better work, I'll fix it. or they, Like, that's just dirty. Like, there, there's too many people out here to be fighting over clientele like that. All these billions of people in the world. Yeah. So yeah. hopefully this will shed a light on the little ins and outs of the tattoo shop and just tattoo culture in general and hopefully make it better so that you don't have to deal with this. I mean, it is turning What's going to make it change, you know? I think what's going to make it change will probably be just attitude adjustment, really, being But who's going to chart, like, change the attitudes, though? Enough. Because now you're getting these young kids that, like, think they, like, know everything and don't need all this experience or put in work to get to where they're at. It's like that mentality of like they don't give really me honestly what I want. honest honestly like I, I'm a firm believer of yeah I've paid my dues, I put in work, but I'm not the kind of person that's gonna be like just because I did it this way you have to either. I mean I go against the grain. I preach about doing things that haven't been done before and changing the dynamics of all kinds of stuff. And if I wasn't saying how I wanted to change things, I would be just the same as all the other people before me. But I would like to change things, and I expect the culture to change. I expect the times to change, the new artists to grow. You shouldn't have to do an apprenticeship for two, three years. If you are an artist that is excelling in all kinds of media of art, and you take the time and put in hours logged on learning, asking the proper questions, getting the knowledge in the right direction and education on body anatomy, mechanics of machines, how they work, inks, all the things that go into inks and health hazards, your skin depths, how to machine and tune and set your machines up, all the, the, the bloodborne pathogens, once you get certified and go through those courses, if you take the proper steps to doing all of that and you excel and you're showing how your excelled work is, like you should be graduating immediately. There, there, you shouldn't have to go through two, three, four year things just to start making some money. Hopefully with all this and everything you're doing at Oxford Ink Tattoo, the culture a lot better and keep people accountable. I think that's the thing. Nobody's really being held accountable. And then you have these owners, like you stated, that aren't tattoo artists and they don't really know what they're doing and yeah. just think it's a quick fix for money. But it's still pushing this 
industry into being hypersexual, unprofessional. So how are you going to expect jobs to be okay with having tattoos when that's what's being presented into the world? So hopefully with all this, it'll lighten up people's beliefs and help change and hold people accountable. But thank you guys for watching that episode of Tattoo Culture on Rise and Grind. If you're a tattoo artist or have had experience with tattoo artists, comment down below an issue or a problem you've experienced or what you believe. If you have a different belief than us, let us know. Um, if you guys got any questions or anything, leave them in the comments. Yeah. We do read all the comments. We'll go through and talk to you guys. If you feel offended by anything that we said, it's probably because it's true and you have something to be offended by. All I know real. is people will be offended when they want to be offended, yeah. no matter even if you say anything offensive. And I'm just stating my experience. But yeah, comment down below. Make sure to follow him on all his social medias. We got a lot of cool stuff going on. I can't wait for you guys to see it. So until next time, rock dogs. Rock dogs.